Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you doing out there? I hope everybody is well and good. And here we are into officially, I'm well, it's been officially Christmas, huh? But Christmas is just around the corner. And so I uh, hope everybody's prepared. I know I'm not, but uh, hey, that's like that every year. So, hey, I want to welcome you to our live stream. Remember, this is your live stream, not ours. If you guys don't show up, we ain't going to either. So, um, I love it when you bring your questions, your requests, and what have you. And uh, anyway, thank you for joining us. I see Jim Rolf is here. Hi, Jim and Tom, Daisy, and JPJ. Merry Christmas. Great. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas to you guys, too. So here's what we've got going on today. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, this guitar, the L5. Isn't this pretty? This is Santa Claus's L5. You know, he can afford any guitar. Yeah, the elves build it. And uh, this is his guitar. And he let me borrow it for this live stream today. And uh, we're going to talk about this L5. And then I also want to ask the question, if you could get any guitar under the sun, if you ask Santa for any guitar, what do you think it would be? Um, okay, yeah, here's the question of the day. What is better than a Gibson L5? Is there a better arch top for jazz? That's a good question. And we're going to try to answer that as we go through the show. The thing about um, any guitar that you get is um, it's got to meet several requirements. It's got to sound good. It's got to look good. It's got to feel good. It's got to be easy to play. Uh, it's got to make you happy. You don't, it, it's got to be something that uh, you don't have to fight to play. Uh, you don't get worn out to play. Um, it's easy on your body, on your shoulders, on your wrists, on your hands. And so there's a lot of, um, a lot of things to consider there. So, um, sound is definitely an issue because, you know, you want to have a guitar that when you pick it up and you plug it in and you hit one note, well, in this case, That's... two. That's two. It feels good. It sounds good. So you can be happy just playing a few notes. Right? So, um, anyway, we're going to talk some more about that. But I do want to ask, you know, what, what do you think, what are you jonesing for as far as a guitar? What do you think you would really want to have? Um, <laughs> so we got Wes working the camera today, all the cameras and all this good stuff. There he is. See him? Yeah. Might even squeeze myself in under the question of the day. It works, works there great. There you go. There yeah. you are. There you are. And then Gail's working the uh, uh, message board, and uh, so it's a family affair. I've got a cup of coffee here on a bottle of water. I've got some charts we're going to play. And, um, and we need uh, you guys to ask questions. That's true. We do need you to ask questions. Yeah. Uh, down the road a little bit, we're going to uh, talk about some of the best uh, Christmas albums, the best jazz Christmas albums. Mm -hmm. So start thinking of your favorite there. We'll uh, talk about that later. Um, yeah, yeah, your favorite Christmas album. You know what one of mine is? It was free with Taco Bell uh, back in the day. And it had a version of uh, Let It Snow 
and um, Jingle Bell Rock with Stephen Bishop. And I really like Stephen Bishop. And uh, he did two really nice versions of those songs. And one of my, on that record, I think it's, no, the stars, the stars come out at Christmas. It was a Taco Bell album, a CD they give away, I think. And um, so I, we got that. And on it has Aretha Franklin doing Winter Wonderland. And I just heard it the other day. I haven't heard it in a long, long time. And I said to Gail, who is that girl singing? I was thinking, it didn't sound like Aretha Franklin. And I thought, man, now there's somebody I'd really like to play with. <laughs> and then I get find out, it's Aretha Franklin. I just love her version of that. It's like, wow, that is so cool. So maybe maybe someday in the afterlife we can I could do a gig with her. Uh, there was some there were some weird songs on that Taco Bell. Why <laughs> it had Rush Limbaugh about doing oh, right. the, the Christmas. I like yeah. that album. I like that. It was good. There was I feel like the the al the version of Silver Bells on it was really weird. Oh wow, that's a song I haven't played this year. Um yeah. Yeah, that's that Silver Bells, yeah. And I don't remember who did it, but it was I I don't know. Or maybe it was just like it was a, a like a it wasn't Silver Bells, but they went and like wrote a song that was like along the lines of, of Silver something Bells? like City Christmas in the City. Well, that's the line in the song. Oh, right. I know. But they, like, spun it's, the whole song. Nah, I don't think they did. Yeah, it was... That, yeah. You were a we, little boy. We there. listened to that. Oh, yeah, but we listened to that, that thing for, like, years and years and years. Yeah, I know. I think it came out in 95. <laughs> Which, God dang it, that was a while ago. 95. <laughs> Which, God dang it, that was a while ago. Yeah. 95, 2005, 2015. It's kind of coming on 30 years. Holy moly. Wait, you said it came out when? In 2095, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, I noticed I have let it snow on here twice. What? Oh, the last The one. stars come out ninety in 94. 94? It, it came out, yeah. What else is on that album? Uh, let's see. Isn't that the one with Aretha Franklin doing doing uh, Winter Wonderland? Uh, I don't see her on on this one, but mm -hmm. Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, this is what I'm seeing right here. That's Rush Limbaugh. Wait, this one was '93. Oh, that's that's a different one. There's a red one. So there's two of them. Is that the one that's got Let It Snow on it? Um, uh, let's see. Well, I don't know why we're talking about this. It's an album no nobody can get anymore except on eBay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> crazy. Um. Well, anyway, yeah. So what's your favorite Christmas albums, you guys? Um, you know, I know CTI had some cool jazz ones. Um, my favorite, one of my favorites, of course, is uh, Joe Pass's... Um, Joe Pass, what's it called? Santa, Santa something... Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, I'll, actually, we're going to talk about that uh, oh, okay, pretty good. soon. So, so. Okay, we won't talk about that then. All right, so what's happening uh, as far as guitars here? I have one 575 left. It's out for repair. It's got a little problem, and I want to get have that fixed. But I hope to have a Gibson 175 Natural coming in. Hope. Got a uh, Eastman 503 still. Where is it? Here. A great guitar, man. And uh, so anyway, 
what else? Well, I forget what else we got. Uh, you know that Gibson Mid Midtown, Wes? I took, I put, I restrung it with Slinky Strings, and I took it to a gig, uh -huh. to a, to a blues jam. I got more compliments on that guitar. I, I couldn't believe it. People are going, "Wow, that thing sounds so good." I'm like, "How's it?" I, you know, <laughs> it's the Chet Atkins thing, you know, of somebody coming up to Chet and says, "Hey, uh, boy, that guitar sounds good." And he put it down, put it in the holder, and said, "How's it sound now?" <laughs> now it's the player too, you know. Right. Yeah. Anyway. That's a major verb on here. Is that how it is? I mean, that's how you wanted it. You, you, just, you did it. I did? Uh. There's a Six string Santa, thank you. There's a really fine line with this it reverb is. knob on here. It is, right? You know, in Latin... But I, I think more is better than none at all. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. You know, reverb. What do they call that uh, for vocals? The, uh, the, uh, the, the elixir, the fixer. Yeah, it helps a lot with vocals. Um, somebody said here. Look at it. it. Says I'd really like to have an L5 from the twenties, like my dad played. Wow, that would be good. You know, I got a 1955 um, Guild X350 Stratford. Which, I, I know people are going to uh, complain about this, but it had the net, the V-neck on it. And I'm going to, uh, as soon as I get it back from my friend who's working on it, I had to refret it, and I had him sand down the neck. I mean, he took that V out. Now it feels, it feels more like this neck. So, because I bought it to play, I want to play that dang thing. And so, when you, you mention L5s from the 50s or the 20s, man, they had monstrous necks. It's like two hands and to finger it. Um, Let It Snow is an interesting tune, right? It starts on the two chord. Then it goes, and it's got this chord here, this, and I brought some corn for popping, right? And so sometimes you think, what the heck is that, the mini chord? How would you interpret that chord? And um, it's something that I've kind of wrestled with, and it finally occurred to me. You know, I, I've mentioned it to a couple of friends of mine. Uh, on There's several songs that have this in it. Like Donna Lee, you know, it's got that. Um, and they said, well, it's passing chord. Well, yeah, that's true. But every passing chord has some sort of function. And so what is it functioning as? It's like, hmm. Well, it's going to a D, uh, a G minor, right? So... Um, I'm actually, and then to a C7. So, the, the fire is so delightful, right? So, what is that chord? All right, so here's what I'm thinking it is. If you look at it as an extension of the two chord dominant, and I brought some chords, And then two five of one. So I think it's kind of functioning as a G7. Well, I got, but it makes no sense from the A minor. So <laughs> I don't know. It, you could call it a pit bot some corn for papa. Or it, let's let's use it as a dominant chord. I got some corn. Right, it kind of works then, doesn't it? Okay, so a lot of times a diminished chord, it's not as obvious as you think it is. Usually it's an extension of a dominant chord. And the 
they generally are. It's finding out which dominant chord it is. So in my soloing, I could go. Doesn't that make sense? And then, and then, this, so it, it goes through a, a, a variety of harmonics. It doesn't show signs of popping. And long as you love me so, then the E, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It's crazy, that tune. And then it goes to the key of C, just abruptly. On an Aegis good night, how I hate to go out and alone. But if you really hold me tight, all the dominant, all the way home, I'll be warm. Then I'm so it's a crazy little tune. Did you get that, Wes? Oh, yeah. Crazy. 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 Daddy. I, that's exactly what I think of when I hear that song, too. Hey, that, man, that's crazy, Daddy-O. That's, that's the word from the 50s. But crazy. Dig that crazy rhythm. I like that. Yep. Uh, do we have any questions here? Or anything? Well, yeah, we do. We have one question. It's the question of the day. God damn. Uh, we well then now there's there's sixty people on there. Be, when we first asked the question, there was like fifteen. Let's okay. triple that. So, All right, so we want responses to this question. Is there a better uh, jazz arch top than an L five? What do you think? You, not not the viewers. Me. You, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it is the ultimate, you think. It's, it's the bar, right? It sets the bar. All right, so what is it? Uh, how could you improve on this? Well, I believe that Heritage did. Johnny Smith did. Um, so Johnny, the Johnny Smith, it's not so damn big. Okay, so this is big, right? Five, three and a half or whatever it is. Three and uh, five eighths, something like that, wide. Seventeen across is fine with me, but it's wide, and then sometimes it hits you in here, and it's like, okay, it's got a certain angle for the for the uh, neck. Now the Johnny Smith, he said, let's make this a little, little, not so big, okay, and let's put a steeper neck. Angle. The steeper neck angle means that it's kind of more closer to you. It's going like this. So now that's what a heritage, well, heritage is a little different too because they have a steeper, they have a steeper uh, pitch on the headstock. So yeah, there's that. So um, because, because the L L5 I'll be honest, can be a little uncomfortable. And unless you're holding it right and it's a heavy guitar. But does it have the sound? Is it a guitar that you can play for four hours straight? Uh, then a lot of guys think, well, this 25 and a half inch scale, well, that's rough, you know, after a while. Uh, to be honest, uh, I've thought that too many times, and that's why I got 
that L4. When your hand feels good and, and you're not crippled, you can deal with this. So there's a lot more, a lot of things that I would say, yes, there are better guitars than an L5, but there's something about the L5 that's like, wow, this is cool. And you know, Jim Hall, I've heard stories say that he had an L5 and hated it. And I forget what he got after that. You know, a lot of guys, an L5, you don't, if you don't, you really can't hear the nuances of the guitar with a loud group. So a lot of that, that those tonal quality, qualities get wasted. Uh, you hear it, you hear it uh, in a very soft, you know, like Wes, they played, you know, with an acoustic piano. He played very soft. His amp wasn't cranked, right? And he's sitting right next to it. But he got a beautiful tone, didn't he? So, um, I don't know. I, I'd say it, it depends on the playing situation. How, do, how is that for a... Uh, uh, good, good, yeah. Um, okay, got it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, I want to, we want to hear from, uh, the viewers out there and, um, if you think, uh, the L5 is the best, just, you know, let us know if you think there is something better, uh, let us know. I think that, uh, that's, I know a Stratocaster <laughs> for jazz. It's not an arch top. That's not in the, oh, okay. A 335. I, I mean, I actually think the, that, you know, the some of the, um, you, uh, maybe, what's the, what's the super high-end guild one that you, I mean, we've had, 700. We've, had we've had those, but isn't there one above that? Well, oh, there's the artist award. Right. See, I've, I've never heard one of those, but usually judging by the guilds, man, those things always sound really good. And they just have their own kind of thing. But I don't know. That L5 sounds really good. So anyway, what about if we're missing one? anything, uh, yeah, I mean, that one's, that's pretty good for sure. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's pretty good. So the uh, this guitar is a little, not as wide here, you know, so you can get it a little bit closer to you, which is kind of nice. Um I don't know if it's got a steeper neck angle. I have a feeling it does just a little bit, but it's definitely got a steeper uh, pitch on the headstock. It's got more mass on the headstock, uh, puts more pressure, down pressure on that. And Johnny Smith, on the Johnny Smith, the same thing, the neck angle, so the bridge had to be higher. So it put more pressure on, on the top to make it vibrate more, I guess. But, do they feed, you know, they feed back sometimes too, you know, if you're not with the right amp at the right volume. So. Um, we, there are some, uh, some questions. Um, Mark Larkins uh, says, Rich, you did a stunning ending on your current video of Oh Christmas Tree. Could you play that? The ending. Just the ending? I don't remember what it was. Hmm. Well. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> this is probably the, the, the ending that you do on every song. The <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> I swear you literally do that every song you play. I told you when I'm like editing videos, I'm just like, ah. Oh. Right. I've told you a million times, don't exaggerate. I'm going to have to cut that off. <laughs> Every video. So, let's see. Um, anyway... Play a tune. Okay. I, 
I did this last week and I did a poor job. Hopefully I do a better job this week. <laughs> Maybe not. for it. The, uh, you know, the Nashville guitar player, you know, that um, not uh, Guy Van Dusen, uh, the other guy um, back back there uh, that I have his books and stuff. Anyway, he was saying he, he was he played a tune for Chet when he was young and Chet said, you know, it was great. And he said, what, what do you do if you make a mistake? And that's so true. If you make a mistake, it, it blows the whole routine. So now you got to figure out how, how do you, what do you do next? Oh my gosh. Woo. So that's what playing is like. Make a mistake. You're out to lunch. Unless you figure out what to do. So that's why I think it's good that Joe Pass always said, you know, know the melody inside and out. You got to know the melody. Um, oh. Yeah, there's some more uh, questions here. Uh, Michael uh, Michael Grisham uh, asked, "Does uh, does or did Gibson make the L five in a left handed version?" I'm sure it, it could be ordered or would have been ordered. I'm sure they could have. I've seen a couple of um, 
uh, and you rarely see them, but Heritage's uh, Eagles, left-handed versions. I've never seen any of them. Uh, I looked on Reverb, and there's a couple there. So uh, you might check that out. Um, let's see. What else? Tom Johnson. Hey, what's happening, man? Um, JPJ, I was thinking recently, are there any famous left-handed guitar players? Well, you know, Ted Green was left-handed, but he played right. I, I don't know why you would flip your guitar over, because if you're left-handed, my gosh, your left hand's doing all this work. I mean, shouldn't it? Shouldn't you just learn to play a right-handed guitar but being left-handed? I think Tommy Tedesco is left-handed as well. So they just didn't flip their guitar over, you know, like, like... Uh, Dick Dale did, you know, or restring it backwards. Um, so I would think if you're left-handed in the very beginning, boy, don't encourage any of your students to play left-handed. Uh, Randall Smith just said he had a lefty L5 built in the early 70s. Really? Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um. Let's see. John Knowles. Thank you, honey. John Knowles, of course. How come I, I, can't, I forget who I am? Uh, John Knowles. John Knowles. Knowles. Tom uh, says maybe a Gibson Johnny Smith from circa 1967. There was one on the cover of a Johnny Smith LP when I was young. A gorgeous guitar. So that'd be one that would compete with the L5, right? The Oh, yeah. Johnny yeah. Smith. Sure. For sure. Um, da Daisy Havens, uh, could you possibly go through your recording slash PA setup? Uh, is that you mean what we're doing in here now or what he records with? Because right now we're just going, we just plug everything into a Mackie mixing board. There's not a lot to it. Yeah. It goes out from and a goes USB into, into my computer. My, 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 my computer. Uh, it's a, it's a Mackie Pro FX 12 yeah. channel. And we yeah. use four channels. Oh, well, three. Uh, let's see. I'm trying not to miss anybody here. There's, there's more. I like Tom said, Elvis didn't recall that he actually did Blue Christmas Live on 68 TV special. I don't know. I that that's an interesting question. I don't think he did. Did you see that new Elvis movie? And uh, so that that singer special was a big deal. Um, let's see the the Jofrica uh, asks thoughts on an ES one seventy five S. I feel they have a pretty classic, strictly jazz, straight ahead sound, whereas the L five can have bluesier applications. <laughs> what is an S? Is that a single pickup? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, an L5, you never use that back pickup anyways. You know, maybe unless you're Merle Travis or... Actually, there was a guy in Moby Grape played an L5. I don't know how he did it, you know, to play an L5 at a high volume like that. So, um, but I remember seeing that on the cover. <clears throat> Uh, Garrett asks, uh, what are your thoughts on older Korean Epiphone Joe Pass Emperor guitars? I have no thoughts on it at all. I, uh, the only one that I played that I really dug, a guy had at a guitar show, and he replaced all the parts on it, uh, all the pots, all the pickups, and I thought it was nice. It played well, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was that was an older one. So. Uh, the Jofrica uh, had more. The nuances is a good point. The L5 is not really one where you roll the tone knob nearly all the way off. Some highs on the tone knob help the nuances, in my opinion. And then he, good point. They, he says, uh, ES-175 equals Joe Past. Joe Past, Jim Hall sounds. 
L5 equals West Montgomery sounds. That's good. Yeah. Uh, J.D. John Guild Artist was originally their version of the Johnny Smith Guild. Oh, that's good to know. Um, Robert Williams, uh, what strings are you using? That's a good one. It is. We They're available on the website. Let me see in my drawer here. Uh, okay, I'll move on while you... <laughs> How much stuff is in that drawer? <laughs> Seriously, here's, sounds like... Here's my strings. Uh, they're Diodario, Chrome Brights, Extra Light, with a uh, 1315. Instead of a 10 and a 14, it's 1315, and then everything else is the same. 20, 38, 48, 28. Anyway, available at guitarcollege.com. Um, Mark Larkin says, I really like the look, sound, and performance of your L4. Well, let's get it out. Yeah. Well, you know, I got the L4. They used to call it the poor man's L5, right? Which I think is kind of a crappy description. But um, <clears throat> because it's his own little guy, you know? Um, and then Jim says... Uh, Almost sold that this week. Almost. G what, the L4? No, the, that red Gibson. Uh, wait, the Gibson or the Heritage? Heritage. Um, Jim's never played an L5. Uh, the only arch top he's played are an Eastman 503 and John Paisano. Oh. The John Paisano, that, uh, that's their Eastman's most high-end kind of guitar, isn't it? Well, they have some other ones that are really up there, too. Some 17-inch and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of their more expensive guitars. I think it's one of their nicest, uh, great guitar for jazz, the Paisano. Um, Boy, you hear the difference? I mean, it's just this. Yeah, that sounds, thing sounds pretty good. Yeah, but doesn't it sound littler? Yeah, it does. Um, uh, Mr. Will Guitar asks Is there any way to know neck profiles, etc.? Always seems random for me that Epiphone Joe Pass neck is perfect with a Yamaha AEX 1500 responsiveness, but I can't seem to find neck specs accurately. Yeah, I, I don't, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. You, you would think, you know, they're using the CNC machines, they would have the specs all dialed out, which I'm sure they do, you know. Or I, I don't know how it works. Maybe maybe some guy that day running the machine says, I'd like a little smaller neck, you know. I, I, so let's make a hundred of them like that. Right. <laughs> um... Let's see. David Graham said, like most people, I am limited by what I have played. I've played but two L5 CES guitars in my life. A 1964 L5 CES and my own 1977 L5 CES. To be honest, I failed to see the difference. Failed to see the difference between a 65 and a what? 64 and a 77. Oh, really? Except for the volute? 77's got the volute. So you have two L5s? No, he just played the 64. He owns the 77. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, they're, you know, they kind of... You know, that's the thing about guitars. They stick to tradition a lot, you know? So I think that's pretty cool. So... Uh, um, he, he never returned as a horse says, please remember Robin Ford first played a jazz box when he burst on the scene as a teenager. Oh. He never returned as a horse? That's his the guy's name. Oh. He never returned as a horse. Hmm. He commented the other day on something. He, he said he's 
I think he's a student of yours. He's taking some of your stuff. Oh. Um, yeah, so, you know, the um, L5s, um, when you get into, like, the... I had a 67, and um, it had a 5 8 nut, 1 and 5 8 nut, which... I like, I like that. I like it a little thinner there, actually. Um, on this Stratford that I'm having um, the fellow redo, I'm gonna have him cut the nut at five eighths. And uh, just cause, just cause, cause I want it, you know, so. You, just because this is, you know, one and 11 sixteenths, you can still cut it any way you want. So even if you have one and three quarter inch, a lot of times, guys will think, oh, I can't stand it, you know, because of, it's too wide. Um, I'm thinking, you know, just have the nut cut differently. So, anyway. Um, David Graham uh, says, the 1960 LP of West, the one with Yesterday's and Satin Doll, that LP has the L5 sound, so responsive and full. Yeah. Um, he says he did try out a 2018 Heritage Eagle. Nice, but to my ear, it didn't have the tonal complexity of the L5. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're well, almost... I have a video of comparing them, you, you know, on your older video. And if you look it up, you, you can compare them. And uh, I think we have an L5, uh, a Golden Eagle... And some other guitar. Um, and uh, a lot of people, you know, they hear that L5 and they like it. No. Um, and then Pat Yak says, uh, maybe a Johnny Smith from the 60s or a Super 400. Uh, he said he played a Banadetto once at a store. Sounded good and great tonal response. Yeah. Well, um so what's a what's the difference there from a what's a, a super four hundred to an L five? Super four hundred right? is eighteen inches. Right. Eighteen inches. So it's a big guy. That is so big. That's crazy. Well, it's like that Johnny or, or the uh, Kenny Burrell. That here it is, Kenny Burrell. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Anyway. Um, uh. One more time here. Uh, <laughs> we want uh, some more responses. If you yeah. think there is a better guitar out there that we're missing, we're missing something. You know, there's some right. guitar that we haven't mentioned that that uh, that can compete with uh, an L5 for sure. Yeah, I don't know. You know, yeah. Some handmade thing. Anyone, yeah, anyone got any handmade, like, you know, super custom guitars that you think could stand up to it? Maybe? I don't know. Well, I got my Ed Schaefer. I think that does a nice job. I should have brought that. Um, yeah. Uh, that is a cool guitar. Anyway, send your responses. Uh, Lance Morris says, is favoring... 10 to 46 gauge strings on my 2006 L5, something taboo for jazzers. Yeah. 10 to 46 gauge. So you like the 10. That, that the problem with the 10 is, unless you're bending strings, it just gets a kind of a tinky sound. Yeah. Uh, you like, it's hard to, hard to even do it. it. It just gets a crappy sound. So that's why I went to a 13. 15 and then uh, this is the regular part of that 10 gauge so the um, unless you're bending strings what why do you want to uh, the theory behind getting a jazz box is to get the strings fat but not too fat over if you get them fat between the G and the D I think it wears your hand out if you get these strings too fat, the A and the E, I think it's too, they're too big. It's too big. It's not balanced anymore. That's my feeling. Um, 
but you get the you get the strings under you lower the action as low as it can possibly go and then then you play it play it lightly and you're you're golden um lance morris and jd john both uh, mentioned bird uh, birdland birdlands are are funny guitars um I've played a lot of them because I've I've always been looking for one that I really like that I could afford. They're so expensive, but I tell you, there those guitars are so different be, between models. You know what I mean? Hi. Here's Eddie. Oh, oh you. Well, thank you, honey. Wow. Okay. Well, let me just. Put that up over here, and then we'll play that in a minute. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Don't get any ideas. Thank you, hon. Uh -huh. She just brought out the Ed Schaefer so we could look at it. Um, uh, let's see. What, what's up next? Um, oh. There's more comments here uh, that... What when uh, he never returned as a horse says that uh, that begs the question as to why someone like Barney Kessel stayed with his non L six. I always love his tone. There, I mean, he must have meant L five, right? Or is there such thing as a L six? Well, there is an L six, but uh, Barney played a, a three fifty. Matter of fact, John, uh, John. Doesn't the, those Barney Kessels have the weird kind of like wing thing? Like well, looking? Those, yeah, that's the Barney, uh, Barney, Barney Kessel model. You oh, know? yeah. Which? That was, I remember you had one of those not yeah. super long time ago. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. It was, and uh, it was like, a cool it looked guitar. Like, it looked like Batman guitar or something, It was, right? it was like a Batman. <laughs> like, like a big fork. But uh, it was a custom and it was a beautiful one of Mitch Holder said, I hope you realize this thing is really, really special. Yeah, okay, yeah, I do. Um, but I ended up selling it, and, you know, you, you sometimes you need some money. But, and so one time I, I got out all my guitars, and I played them all. I liked the way the Barney played, but I didn't like the way it sounded compared to the others. So... Even Barney Kessel didn't play a Barney Kessel. So it's huh. something, something to be said for that, you know? Yeah. I yeah, I just I remember just how it looked. It it was yeah. it's it's a funky looking guitar. He, he, yeah, he had the Charlie Christian, <laughs> you know, the three fifty with the Charlie Christian pickup and so that's that's what he played. Bruce Foreman has that actual guitar. Barney Kessel's guitar. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well then what about what's an L seven then? L7 is like an L5, but without all the uh, ornamentation. So it's pretty much the same guitar, except I don't think it's got a five-piece neck. I could be wrong. I don't know exactly about that. If you could look one up and see if it's got a five-piece neck. Uh, I think it's just a mahogany neck. I could be wrong, but it's basically 17-inch solid top laminate sides and back. Gotcha. I think. Uh, Tom says he uh, he can't tell Barney Kessels from Trini Lopez Gibsons. I don't I think I've ever seen a the Trini Lopez. Yeah, it's it well the, the Trini Lopez is a thin thinner body. Hmm. Barney Kessels is is a fatter body. And Trini Lopez also has the diamond F holes, and also the six in a line. Trenny Lopez is six in a line thing. Huh. A friend of mine who who does the the price guide said, you know what, Rich, you should get a Trenny Lopez. And I should have when he said it because you could actually afford him then. Trenny just just passed away not too long ago. <laughs> Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet. But the fruit of the lemon is impossible to eat. 
Remember that tune? And, and what else what did he do? If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. All over this land. I'd hammer out danger. I'd hammer out warning. I'd hammer out a... That's a Trini Lopez song? Yeah. Well, he remade it. He, he kind of did a, a thing like... Um, Johnny Rivers, kind of a live in the studio kind of deal. They've got, they've got crowd noise and people laughing and singing along and stuff. Um, yeah. This, I, I can't do that headstock. That just doesn't look like a jazz <laughs> guitar. No, it, doesn't. it makes it look like a total rock. It looks like a can of, opener. Yeah. I know that how it comes to that little point. Yeah, that's funny. It's yeah. odd. That's an odd guitar. I like the F holes. The yeah. the diamond F holes are cool, but yeah, it looks just kind of like a three thirty five or something, right? Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Very. Very. Um. Let's see. Any other, anything else? I think, uh... So it's 12 o'clock, so maybe we've got new people joining us, huh? Yeah, Because maybe. they get at, they, they, they're on their lunch break at work. Yeah, uh, Mark Larkin's just, uh, the L5, in my opinion, the L5 offers the best jazz tone, best intonation, definitely a lot of guitar and USA-made uh, and then DC says Heritage Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. um, That's sweet guitar. By the way, you know how our little group here, you know, you guys that, that watch this and stuff, um, you know how we're always saying, you know, how expensive an L5 is, that it's got, they've just through the roof. Wes, do me a favor. Go on, can you go on to Reverb and type in Les Paul? And compare the price of a <laughs> of a, a 70s Les Paul with a 70s L5 and see what you get. Because Les Pauls are like through the roof. Yeah. Here's a 70, uh, 72. 72. $7,000 for a Les Paul. That's, uh, that's quite ridiculous right yep. there. <laughs> All right, so uh, what else? Uh, all right, how about put in a 60s? Here's a, here's a one that's a little cheaper. Yeah, 72, okay. 35. So 35. All right, keep looking because when you first put in uh, Les Paul, that does it give you the different different things you can go under? Yeah, what is that? Let's see. Go to, uh, where. what is the most expensive one of that whole nuts? Um... They have anything this from the 70, 70 to, yeah. Nothing the, from 60s? 60s. Oh, that's 60s. Those are all reissues. That, you know, try to find one that's not a reissue. Right. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. 60s to 80, 70 to 85. Look at that. There's another one. I see 7,000, 5,000. Yeah, that's a lot for sure. This, yeah, wow. 9,000 for that guy. Yeah. 6,000. Oh, look at that. There Dang, you there you go. It's a custom black. I remember a guy at the guitar uh, guitar show brought me one of those and said, man, I want to sell it. And I forget how much he wanted for it. But it was one of the fretless wonders. What a pile. Good God, it's just like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. But come on, man. Now, the workmanship for a L5 compared to a Les Paul, I, 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 unless I'm totally wrong and I, I'm missing something, but it seems to me you can crank out a Les Paul a lot faster than you can crank out an L5. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you have to be. Right? You have, yeah, absolutely. So... Um, you know, you can whine about all that, but the, the price of some of those, but gosh. Uh, let's play a tune. Shall we play a tune? Um, sure. Well, actually, 
Uh, here, one more time here. Question of the day. You can read it off. What is better than a Gibson L5? Is a... Is, oh, I don't see the word there. Is there a better oh. arch top for Jeff? Oh, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. There is no... Did you write there? Uh, so there is not there? Yeah, there's... There's... Yeah. No. Typo. Oh. oh, way to go, Mr. Uh, copy man. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. That's a pretty big word there. Um, well, I'll take this down now. Take it down. Take it down. Taking it down over here, boss. Uh, Can anyway. you take down this, this software controller? Or do you need that up? Uh, no, no, here. Here you go. Oh, then I can see some of the questions. Okay, there are, that's the last time we'll use it anyway. So yeah, if you have any other uh, any other ideas on better guitars, better jazz guitars than L5s, then let us know. Uh, let me catch up on these comments real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. That red L5, you have truly a beauty. I'm personally a Gibson fan because sadly, I like the brand slash headstock. Heritage is equally as nice, but that headstock throws me off. Super 400 10K price kills me. I agree though on that headstock. The headstocks on the those things are just huge. They look... Well, so is a headstock on a Super 400. No, I'm not, I don't think I've seen that. I think one of the best guitars out there is... The Super 5. Super 5. Nice, nice. It's a Super 400 neck and headstock on a L5 body. Now, if you can find one with mounted pickups, I think that's, that's, real. and that's, that's, that's nice. Um, and Roger Snyder says he bought your strings for his jazz guitar and he really likes their silky smooth feel. Waves Seattle. Waves Seattle. What kind of guitar is that, Roger? Uh, JD John 5859 is totally crazy on Paul's. I can only imagine what those prices would be. It would be like 15 grand, right? For 50s? Oh, oh for 50 fi grand, right? For a Les Paul? Yeah. Yeah, or, or you know, <laughs> you want to get a shocker? You know, type in a 1962 Fender Strat. Fender Telly or Strat, yeah. Right. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. What do I think of the West Montgomery L5? I think it's really nice. You know, um, I think it's uh, Tom Van Hoosen um, who discovered that the original Gibson. L5 single pickup that Wes Montgomery played was actually an acoustic guitar first, and then the pickup was added later, which is very interesting because the bracing is different. So, uh, so uh, uh, Topaz Adita, Aditya says uh, Sadowski Jim Hall signature model better than uh, L5. You really? Yeah. Okay. Mm, that's so that's it. That, that's that's cool. This is uh, what we got here. That now that body is made in J Japan or somewhere, and then he put some. I wish you know it's on an expensive guitar. The dot inlays. I, I'd like a night a prettier inlay than that, or none at all. Is there binding on that thing? It's, I think it's black binding. Maybe. Right. Uh, hard to tell. It's kind of interesting looking. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a 2007-2004 caramel burst. Oh, that's a cool piece of wood right there. Mm -hmm. Kind of like squares on it, checkerboard type of thing. Yeah, on a quarter cut or whatever it's called. It's on... Um, what's going on there? Oh, just met, the, the just net, showing you the, the, the 
a nut width. It's right. one and three quarters. Right. Huh. Yeah, you'll have to buy one of these. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Have you, uh, here's a question for you. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you can restart. Uh, Ryan Priester, <laughs> have you ever played a Gibson Kalamazoo award? No. And what then, is know, that? I don't know. I don't know. Look, you have to look it up. I don't know. I have that. Kalamazoo Midtown, but uh, not a not a an award. I don't know why they're calling it Kalamazoo because they don't own that factory anymore. Kalamazoo, you, you know, why do they call it that? Uh, let's see. Oh man, yeah, that's pretty sweet right there. Oh, well, that's um, wow. That's like a. Um, is that like a? Uh, That Citation. Thing, that thing's pretty, man. Which is kind of like a, uh, which is like a Johnny Smith. Boy, yeah. Well, that's that's gorgeous. A lot of work went into that. Uh, yeah, that thing's nice. I like that tail piece right there. Yeah, it's got a bird on it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Boy, that now you know you really gotta boy those uh, guitar like that. That's artwork. Absolutely. So that's what I love about. Guitars, you know, sometimes you know they're they're more of an. I like art too, you know. Like it's like the guys that I I've, I've talked to that are real uh, real good builders and stuff. They seem very artistic. Not only just good builders with wood, but they're like artist kind of guys, you know. And uh, so I I think I find that interesting. How about a 775? All right. A 775 is really nice. Really, really nice. I had a chance to get one, and I balked on it and didn't get it uh, at a guitar show, and I really wish I did. I had compared it to this guitar, and I liked the other one better. I liked the 775 better. Um, it's prettier, you know, it's dressed up headstock. Oh, there's one that's uh, rare. Yeah, they are rare. Uh, prettier headstock, it's just, um, now it's a, it's a maple top. It, no, is it solid maple? No. I'm trying to think. Uh... Yes, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're they're very nice. I like them. Very, very pretty. Very nice. Sound good. I, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Boy, that would be great guitar for Christmas, wouldn't it? That red one. Yeah. This, yeah. This thing you were wondering well. what to get me. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's actually not. It seems kind of reasonable for a price too. It's forty five hundred. You know, is that that's Lovey's, isn't it? In Thousand Oaks. Oh, nice. Yeah, it yeah. is. So. Um, I have to make a trek down there. Yeah, I. I There's he's a hole missing right the here. pick guard. Oh, that's what that is. Um, I've been over there, but no, it's like you gotta uh, have an appointment or something. I go over there. Oh wow! It's right on Tio Boulevard there. But I mean, the the this one's also. You know, not super no. out of this world expensive. Yeah. Let's see, the cutaway is on. Yeah, it's. Is it? The Yeah, it's on the same fret. Yeah, that that's nice. Yeah. So there's another option. That's another option. Very nice. But you know what? A 575 sounds just like it. And so uh, I like a 575. 
um, <clears throat> the Heritage 575. All right, where are we at, Wes? Uh, yeah, just uh, we Chuck says uh, I have to agree with Wes on the headstock. On the Heritage, it's so huge. What? It distracts from the instrument. Mark Larkins says the headstock's huge, and it makes this freaking thing look weird. I, I just... Uh, which guitar? On the Heritage, the, e the Golden Eagle. Oh. Uh, and then Chuck says, uh, Rich, didn't you own a highly decorated L5? Yeah, we were playing it earlier. He's We've moved oh, on from... Late, um, maybe we'll grab it again towards the end. Uh, but yes, we still have it. We used it earlier. Uh, Charles Lord, have you ever used a Rickenbacker 330 for jazz? No. And then uh, Topaz again. Uh, has this uh, any thoughts on the Ibanez Pat Metheny models? Have you ever played one? Uh, yes, I have, and um, it didn't knock me out. It felt like a China guitar. Well, aren't they made in Japan? Yeah. Right. It, I don't know. It just didn't knock me out. Okay. So, well, a guy ha had it at camp one time, and I played it. He played it. And... Okay. Uh, it just it, it didn't knock me out. Are you gonna? I, I think this this five oh three is. Is so underrated. Um, I, I think that guitar sounds great. It does. Those things do sound good. They're cool looking too. I like the way those those things look. Are you gonna play something? Well, I, I've been trying to for the last twenty minutes. All right, go for it. Jeez, man. So uh, we'll do. Yes, there it is. Thank you. The official Thank ending you. to all your songs. Isn't that a nice arrangement? I, I, I'm, I'm proud of that one. <laughs> that would make a nice uh, string quartet arrangement. I want to do that. By the way, next, we're going to have another uh, live stream next Thursday. I want you to be thinking about goals for next year. Put on your thinking cap. This this means think. Wes, you got any news? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, hold on. Did 
there was a uh, question, or not a question, but a comment from Larry Jackson. Larry Jackson? Do you know Larry? No. Oh, he said, because he said, uh, hey, uh, hey, I'm out here in L.A. acting. They got me playing a dead man in a casket. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Larry. Well, you know, it, it takes experience to be able to do that. I hope he hasn't died once already. Uh, P. See how I did that? P. Cali just tuned in from Melbourne, Australia. Very oh, sweet. How fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Uh oh. Here's a problem too many guitars. I was going to play. Should I play the uh, Schaefer or the, or the uh, 580, 530, 503? 503. Uh, I want to hear the Schaefer, to be honest, because... Whoa. Ouch. Which guitar has a hole in it now? Well, it's just... You know. Do you want me to do news right now? All right, are you ready? I, yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. yeah, do the news. I just wanted to get to that awesome comment from Larry real quick. <laughs> I mean, is it hard to play a dead person? Like when they have you sitting there for that long and you, you know, you're trying not to move, you're trying not to breathe, you're like... What if you're in a, you know, if that casket's got fuzzy stuff, it could make you sneeze. Right. And then you, and then the director would get super pissed at you because you... Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank yeah. Uh, anyway, so I do. I don't have much uh, guitar news today, but uh, I do. <laughs> thought this was funny. Uh, this company, um, there, there's a brand. Uh, this brand of guitars, obscure brand, uh, claims the crazy designs are delivering the future of guitar manufacturing. And uh, I gotta be honest. Uh, I think they're living up to that claim. Uh, this is a company called Basuyi Guitars. Uh, they've uh, unveiled a new range of double neck guitars. Now, these aren't your typical double neck guitars like you see on the right. These are guitars that you flip over and they have uh, different types of strings on, on either side. Um, here's one of them. This, this particular one here has a uh it's a, a six string um steel string on one side nylon string on the other and uh and yeah they but that's not at all they have all these that's weird Brash, they have all these weird uh ones that aren't um that aren't double neck uh guitars like uh this one right here um you fl it's it's a bass on one side and a guitar on the other um oh really right here like yeah and so they have these kind of like see see the neck on this thing how big fat square neck oh yeah so uh so they're starting to make a name for themselves um lately they're, they're more and more people are showing them on YouTube playing uh, some some weird stuff um here's uh here's one guy uh, kind of jamming a little bit here. Uh, this one right here. Um, oh, you flip it, it's a bass on one side. Oh, sorry. Oh, here, sorry. So there you go. He's he's playing uh playing the bass. Flips it over, and boom. That's great, man. <laughs> I, I <laughs> Sweet, man. So there you go. It's uh it's something different and that that's I mean they did claim uh that they are uh their obscure designs are delivering <laughs> the future of <laughs> Guitar manufacturing, and I think they're um, they're living up to that claim. I really yeah. do. So, that's, that props would be to like them. Like having a car that's also a motorcycle. Yeah. You know, you take half the car and 
<laughs> well, they have those boat things. Okay, oh, yeah, so yeah, this yeah. guy, though, listen to this guy. So this guy, actually, look at how he's playing it. Okay. Um, yeah, he's a tapper. Yeah, so, but he, he's he got, got something going on here. So that's pretty interesting, right? I mean, oh, that's very interesting. That's, that, that would be hard. That would oh, take yeah. a lot of practice. But, you know, if you wanted that street performing, that people would line up to watch that and give you tons of tips. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, there you go. And, and uh, another thing about these guitars is they're uh they're only like 395 bucks i think that's 385 was like the 450 um i think this is the most one of you know f that they don't go over like 700 bucks so you can pick one up from for pretty cheap um and you know they got they got two necks on it so wow. yeah so yeah like you said that that uh that was like yeah, tom brush's guitar uh, um Synthesizer gear you know, he's got gear. this thing that he was kind of the originator of this. He's got yeah. this this thing where. <laughs> yeah, so he, he flips this thing over and. Yeah. So anyway, this this uh this company is taking uh taking it and running with it. So. That's what I'm getting you for Christmas. Sorry, how I, I you know. I know you please wanted. The, I know you wanted the seventy. I'd rather have some. I know. I know you wanted some Old Spice. I'd rather have some Old Spice. I know you wanted the seven seventy five, but instead you're getting a Basuyi yeah, double neck with the uh, the big square, uh, square neck. Um, and then uh, one other thing uh, that we were talking about that uh, we promised to chat with you guys about was. Uh, jazz guitar today. Um, our friends over there, uh, they put out a little art, cool little article. Five great jazz uh, guitar Christmas albums to add mm -hmm. your to your collection. Um, the Charlie Bird Christmas album. Oh, I've never heard that. I bet you that's good. Chet Atkins. I bet. Oh yeah. That's got to be a good one. It's got a sure. ton of songs on it too. Oh, Look yeah. at that. Hey, here you go. Um, Joe Pass, Six I String see, yeah, Santa. I hate that one. Uh, Larry Carlton, Christmas oh, at my house. Never heard that. Um, and then Dave Stryker, yeah. Dave Stryker. I like him. Yeah. So, we were wondering what uh, what what are your favorite jazz uh, Christmas albums? Um, and uh, yeah, I know. Um, you got some. Did, did West Montgomery ever do a Christmas thing? No. No. Not to my knowledge, no. Right. There's not. I mean, there's not all, all that many out there, right? Um, well, there's. I have two. Yeah. The, uh, so I was gonna say. I honestly, I think I was listening to this one earlier, uh -huh. Blue Christmas, and it uh, it rocks hard, man. It's 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 got yeah. it. It's a good. Um, that's a great album because it's just not Christmassy, you know. That's yeah. that's my favorite part about it is you're not like you go you play the melody and then you go off into jazz world Outer for space. a little while and then you come back and it's <laughs> it's just it gives you a break from the, the stupid melodies. Um, I'm telling you though. The best uh, song on there is the uh, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Oh. Um, and then, yeah, then Roy plays the bass line. <laughs> and, then, and then in the middle of it, you just go out into left field. You just yeah. you totally switch the vibe and start sw going into this swing thing, and it lasts forever. Um, yeah, that's a... a that's a good one. And then all yeah, I really like how all the melodies too are you know, you play them in a in an octave kind of West Montgomery feel and uh I po I posted a video earlier this morning um 
of you playing to your tracks. Uh, and those, oh, really? uh, yeah, it was What Child Is This and Sleigh Ride. And I think both of those, you kind of do the octave thing as well. Um, oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Um, or Angels We Have Heard on High as well. Like you, oh yeah, angels. Yeah, yeah I, I was mean, gonna play that today. That's a that's a sweet uh, sweet album for sure. I think that Thank needs you, to. Thank you, Wes. How oh, nice. We need to. Uh, Isn't he a nice boy? Yeah. Um, See now you're being nice to me because you know. You know my, I think you you can't beat this album. Jolly Brown, absolutely. Yeah, and you know what I like about this one is. There's really only uh, one Christmas song on it. Christmas yeah. time is here. Well, isn't Christmas tree on here? Oh, it's not on this one. Oh, it, it's not. Yeah, I don't know why it's not, uh, but it, I think it might be on others. Who's but yeah, the drummer on that. Uh, I don't know. Colin Bailey? Is it Colin Bailey? I'm. I have no idea. I think it probably is. Who was on oh, the? Oh, because. Uh, for, so for Django album with Joe Pass. So there's this other one, um, a Charlie Brown Christmas, which I believe has. Uh, does it have? It's got green sleeves. Uh huh. Christmas time is here. Yeah. Oh, Christmas trees on this one. What child is this? I'll have to listen to this one. I I haven't listened to that one in a while, but. The this one, I I am a big. Have you ever heard this song, the uh, the heartburn waltz? No. Oh man, it's I would play it right now, but we will definitely get busted for copyright. That that oh. album is very very protected. But uh, this heart heartburn waltz song has the most interesting melody. Oh really? Well, oh, I'd and like it's, to hear it. it's I'll have really to, you it's have to play it for me when we yeah when we finish this up. It's uh it's really really cool. But yeah, I, I like that uh, album a lot. It's 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 pretty relaxing to get uh, get work done. Um, yeah, I like these waltzes though. The Great Pumpkin Waltz also a good one for sure. So yeah, what's your favorite uh, jazz Christmas album? That was the question posed, right? Yeah, but you, I want what is Mine? yours? Yeah. Well, I said the, the stars come out at the Taco Bell one. <laughs> I mean, like an instrument. I, I don't have, I, 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 I really don't have one. It, it would probably have to be Six String Santa. Maybe that's the wrong song. He does something like that. Skating. Yeah, that's good. I like the Charlie Brown stuff. It's Giraldi. Absolutely. Um, so here is that Ed Schaefer. This is, um, Ed made this for me a long time ago uh, when I was looking at getting us. Remember that Super 5 I used to have? It had a mounted pickup, though. Uh, I finally found a story out about that. Uh, a guy who uh, worked, works on a lot of cruise ships originally had it done, uh, and he did the, um, had, had the uh, pickup mounted on the top, so that, and he, but he didn't drill through the whole top. And um, I forget the guy's name. He's a famous builder. CB. CB uh, did it. Anyway, um, I couldn't afford it. I saw that guitar and Ed said, hey, well, look at it. I'll make you one just like it. But I had him change some things. You know, I, I was saying an L5 kind of pokes you in the gut right here, in the chest. So this is like 12 inches. This is 16 and a half, no, 17 and a half in the lower bout. So it's a skinnier top, big, big lower bout. I call it Marilyn. To, so, and talk about a headstock. Now, yeah, it's that's wide. A headstock. A lot of people look at that and they, oh, I hate that headstock. Yuck. Um, it's kind of like a boat paddle. 
<laughs> if you ever get stuck, you know, you could. It is. It does kind of look like one. Although I, I feel like that looks more natural than the. It's the the long. How long the heritage ones are? That is weird to me. Yeah. Well, I had him put on a tunematic bridge, and he he did a beautiful job on that, and. Um, he called me one day and said, hey, look at man, I'm not going to build arch tops anymore because they're too time consuming. And so your guitar is worth $10,000 now. But anyway, uh, okay. But he didn't want to do multiple binding because um, he felt, um, number one, it takes too long and comes apart and he's had problems in the past. But... Um, now, the pickup was Wrenchley, uh a Kent Armstrong. I took it off and I put this Dragonfire, believe it or not, single pole pickup on it, and I, I liked the sound of it. And what I was really going for on this is to have the least amount of frets as you, I don't need, I don't play up here. If I play up here, it's because I want to sound like a mandolin, but I don't want that, so I had them cut off as many frets as he could. So it's got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 frets. And the distance between the pickup and the bridge is about as far as you can get it. I think he could have actually put it up a little closer, but anyway, it's pretty darn close. And that's the sweet spot of the you know how a lot of people say, you know, oh gosh, you got to have the pickup 12, you know, uh, like like 24 frets away for the harmonic. But that would only be for an E chord, you know, so I, I, it doesn't matter. So it's the distance between here to there. So anyway. Uh, Louis uh, asked, do you have a version of Mary Did You Know? That's a great tune. By the way, did anybody see the Dolly Parton Christmas special last night? Did you see it, Wes? No. It was super good, man. I have a feeling it's probably one of the last things she's probably going to do. I don't know why. I just kind of feel it. She's getting up there. you know. Well, remember we reported a few weeks ago she's working on a rock album? Oh, after, yeah. After her induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so maybe I'm wrong about that. But yeah, I, I I was gonna say I heard an interview on the uh, radio with her over the weekend, and uh, she sounds great. She sounds, I know yeah. she does. God yeah. damn. The special was really nice. I mean, it actually sang about God and Jesus, and holy cow, who would have thought to do that? Um, so that was really really inspiring to hear, and she had just some fantastic tunes on there that. I don't know if she wrote or what, but uh, one of them was called, what was that one called, Honey Family? It's it's Family or something. Beautiful tune. And uh, gosh, it was a great little special, man. It's really good. What network was that on? NBC. Hmm. Miley Cyrus was on there with her. She's kind oh, of yeah. toned down a little bit. Right. You know, so uh, that was really good. Um. Bossa Nova Christmas, Jack by Jack. Uh, yeah, he's good. Nashville session guy. Huh. That'd be cool. Ah, uh, Steve Tyrell's Christmas album. Yeah, that is really good. With uh, Clark Terry and uh, Dave Grusin on, uh, or no, uh, what's the drummer's name? Johnny, Johnny Guerin? Yeah, on drums. Really, 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 really good album. I like Steve Tyrell. Um, oh, I missed, yeah, the, the Paul Simon thing was on last night. I forgot about it. This is also 25 and a half inch scale, in it, but it is a little wider here. So I'm going to recut this nut. I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to recut this nut to a different thing because it's kind of wide. He likes likes it wide and he wouldn't change that. Um Tweed 
Tone uh, says, will you ever sell that red fancy L5? Maybe. And then, uh, the price is right. Um, also, I'm looking into getting an L5 or Barney Kessel custom. I only own a 355. Does the fully hollow sound have more clarity than the semi-hollow Gibsons? Well, I think it's got it's got more uh, tonal spectrum range. I think you know. So yeah, if that's what you're looking at, I, I you know, um, basically uh, on a, my opinion on a semi-hollow body guitar. You're now more dependent on the pickup producing the sound, and uh, the enhancement of the sound of the string isn't as predominant as with a full set uh, guitar. In other words, the string, you wouldn't think it would matter, the body, relative to the string, because here's the pickup, but the string characteristics of the string is defined by this body you know so it it well, maybe not def it, it this body enhances the sound of that string which is being picked up by the pickup on a solid body guitar and there's a video remember that video you showed me where the guy says is it all about the woods and he goes through and, right and he's got he puts a pickup on a two by four and, and strings it up and stuff. Right. And it's like wow, it sounded pretty good. So it's 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 a little different than than that. Yeah. Um... This is a great neck on it. Very accessible. Um, this this these are very old strings. I haven't played this in a while. I don't know why, it just don't. Yeah, here's the the that guy. He uh he and at the end of the video comes from in an electric guitar. What makes bottom half of a metal locking nut? He that's he puts he does he bridge. doesn't even put and it on anything. The steel saddles on the steel there you go. <laughs> with a Seymour Duncan and Valley control plate able goes to pick up heights and strummed an open cord on bolt. There you go. Oh, he plays that one. <laughs> so that's how much impact the woods actually get. Hardly any. It's all pickup. It's all pickup. So you don't even need wood. But he was talking about was Side down, sitting on two chairs and weighted down with a pair of Honda engines. <laughs> the ends of the shelf are braced against the bench with two by fours, so the strings don't pull the shelf closer to the bench when tuned up. The headstock is a piece of wood with tuners put in it. The nut is the bottom half of a metal locking nut meant to go with a Floyd Rose type bridge. Twenty-five and a half inches away are the steel saddles on the steel top-loaded bridge. With a but he goes through everything. Um, the, here, the here's the two by four. So I installed electronics. Yeah, uh, that's one of the best videos, man. He did such a good job on that video. Yeah. <laughs> I get when I first saw that, I thought, wow. It's it really blows your mind and makes you just like, gosh, really, like, yeah. Because when you talk to all the manufacturers, it's all about is it a co a body? Is it what's the density of the wood? Oh blah, yeah, blah blah blah. It goes on and on. I, I, it's, and it's so hard to comprehend that that could be true, but you know. <laughs> Tweet, tweet to him said, the Honda reliability is truly showing its full potential. <laughs> you can't beat a Honda motor, man. If you need to hold down a bench or anything, they're, they're great. <laughs> right. uh, Robert Blagg says, what do you use to get the finish of your <laughs> guitars so shiny? Uh, McGuire's. Uh, McGuire's. Uh, cleaner wax. Cleaner wax. Yeah, it's very non-abrasive. 
uh, wax. It does clean it. And then uh, I, I, I use that, but I don't use it all the time. And, and then once you get it on there, then then you're good. And then, I mean, sometimes I'll use this. It's just, you know, some guys have said, I can't find this stuff. You put it on your Steinway. But uh, I, I, it's a nice, easy polish. It doesn't hurt anything. By the way, I thought I saw Eddie Davis on here. Is he on here? Yeah. Eddie, what's happening, man? This is uh, uh, this is it, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It doesn't build up. It, it's not like a you know a wax that that keeps building up. It. The funny thing is, you can put it on, and you don't even have to wait for it to dry. You just wipe it off, you know, and it cleans it, gets it done. So unless you've got really uh, hazy stuff from years of junk on there, then um, then you're you're okay with that. Nice. Um, anybody else have any other questions? I think I've gotten to everybody. Okay, good. Uh, good. What a been a great day. Oh, uh, Andre Sklogzy one, I believe. Oh, is, Andre, what's happening? Man? Uh, he had a Gibson L five. I bought it at the guitar shows in Marin that you also showed up to. Too bad I don't have that now with my better skills, but that neck was tough to work with. Yeah, kind of a baseball bat, half a baseball bat. We're gonna be going at that show, going to that show again. So. I think it's... Um, it's, yeah, like the 14th and 15th, I think, yeah. of next month. So uh, maybe we'll see you there, Andre. That'd be nice. Um, we, You know, we, we used to sell things. I used to have courses that we would sell there. And um, it, it worked out great. It worked out great. Nowadays, everything's online, so we don't really have anything to sell. And so we've got a few things, some... USB things, but. Uh, and then he asked, um, Tweed Tone asked, uh, what cloth do you recommend with wiping down the neck? Just a cotton or, you know, microfiber, whatever. Right. That cleaner, though, you put it on your neck and it's, you, that feels great. Um, what's up here? I actually had a thought. Now I can't remember what it was. Bobby Cox Jr. says, I have a red L5 CT. I wouldn't take anything for it. It has a thin neck, easy to play. CT, that's like the George Goble, right? It's like a uh, CT. That that means it's uh, thin with a cutaway. Is that right? Those are really nice. That's a, yeah, I wouldn't get rid of that. That's a rare, rare guy. Um, Gawain Smith has a nice comment here. Honestly, you are the best. Uh, honestly, you are the best. I'm in Canada on my lunch break. I can't eat, just need that music. You make my day. Thanks very much. Oh, how sweet. Thank you. Hey, Merry Christmas. Speaking Thanks. of Canada, uh, someone did ask if you have ever played a goat in Fifth Avenue. No, um, well, I played them, yeah. I, but, you know, just at pick it up at the NAMM show and play it and it's like mm. we need to buy one of those everyone I'm there's something to them I think just being made I, in Canada I I wouldn't doubt that either. and for the price I mean 600 bucks that's all they are 700 800 I mean there's other ones but the I think the Fifth Avenue is one of the cheaper ones or the Kingpin yeah I don't know but uh, yeah, either way in your Topaz says uh, in your personal opinion what's the best sounding jazz neck pickup in the market today I guess the Seth Lover is you can, that's very dependable uh, it's, it's, it gets nice tones um the 59 is nice, the Seth 59. But you count, you know, there, there's so many of them now. They're all, they're all really pretty good. Um, 
I tell you what, man, I still like the shallers that they were putting on the old heritage. And then when uh, Rendell, uh, uh, Howard Rendell Wall started taking those and then re I don't know what he was doing, changing magnets or something with them. And then uh, putting them back in the heritages. Those are sweet. They're kind of a darker sounding pickup, which I like that dark sound. Um, so those are good, but uh, you can't just go buy one. You got to buy one used. So uh, I would say maybe the, the Seymour Duncan ones. <laughs> I like these, these crazy dragon fire stupid ones that are so cheap you can't it's crazy so uh just you know thinking about that uh yeah bobby cox said the the uh george goble model uh was is the ct and that's short scale 23 slash four inches or two and three quarter inches, maybe two and a half. I'm not sure what. Oh, uh... well, maybe the body width, the thickness. Right. Um, Roland Mueller. I don't know if I like a guitar until I try it. Valid. Very valid. Yeah, and it's hard to do nowadays because of you know um, the reverb. Uh, you can. You know, a lot of guys will accept returns and stuff like that. But then I know a lot of guys that won't even sell on reverb anymore because of that. Guys would get the, oh, I, you know, after a couple, you know, few days, eh, I really don't like it. It's, you know, so then, then they, they, they uh, send it back. So after a while, some of these guys are like, I'm sorry, I, I'm not even going to sell on reverb anymore. So... That's why I, I think a lot of our students like to get things from me. Not that I take them back, but uh, try to really describe them that good. I mean, I guess, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're, you get them to play really well and easy and. That's true. People you know? know if you're, if you tell them that this thing plays really well and easy and they shows up to their doorstep it's probably going to play pretty easy and have really good action you know yeah um and my real good action is like so low you it's a, it's crazy so usually when i do send out a guitar I raise it up just a little bit and here's the other problem is when you ship a guitar you generally want to take the pressure off the headstock so you got to lower the lower it down and then you know, now it's spent a week on a truck going cross country, and then it um, now they they raise it back up to pitch. Hopefully everything sits right. So you got to kind of teach them to how to adjust your neck. You know, so there's that too. But um, I haven't got hardly any calls of people that say. Oh, you know, the action screwed up. If anything, it would be because it's buzzing. And then I say, hey, you just got to back that truss rod off just a quarter of a turn. Not even a quarter, an eighth of a turn. Just, just take the pressure off a little bit and it'll play great. And then I never hear again from them. They, they're right. So anyway. Uh, do you have any experience with Ibanez uh, GB10? Compared to the other lower priced GB10 SE, SE FM, or EM? Only, uh, I only had the George Benson, you know, the original George Benson that they put out in the 80s. I had one of those. That That's the only George Benson that I'm familiar with. Uh, Bobby Cox has a good, nice comment. Merry Christmas, Rich. You have a great channel. And an important work you are doing. Oh, thank really you. Really important. Yeah, Wes. <laughs> well, it says your son also, so oh, I'm, I'm lumped in there. That's good to hear. This thank is you. important. 
Yeah. No, I mean, in, in 25 years from now, no one's going to be talking about these. Seems like, uh, it seems like. I don't know. Talking about what? Jazz guitars. <laughs> you don't think anybody's going to talk about jazz guitars? I mean, I just dwindling. You know? Oh, I... <sighs> I mean, think of like... Yeah. Think of like classical music. No one's really talking too much about that, right? And it used to be the only thing. <laughs> yeah. Your argument isn't very good, but yeah, it's okay with us. Uh, Ray Biernat says, uh, on jazz guitar, do you ever get tired of the same sound all the time? Maybe having some more pickups would give you more variety in the sound. You know what? Um, I, I I hear what you're saying. And um, so, but when you play a different style, then uh, then you can get different tones. You know, for me, uh, playing a jazz tune with uh, a real trebly sound or something, and, no, it, it just doesn't fit the music, you know. Now, you can take a guitar... And, and then I'll, even just on a guitar, period. If Let's say you're playing a gig, which reminds me, uh, okay, I was playing this gig at Sportsman Lodge many, many years ago for the daughter of Slim Pickens, the actor, Slim Pickens. And, you know, we're playing... Well, after about two and a half hours of that, he, Slim comes over and says... Don't you boys know any country? <laughs> so it's like, okay. So we play the tune. And then I'm going. Did that kind of stuff. So here I'm, you're playing a jazz guitar. All you're doing is picking back here, right? So you can control the way your guitar sounds without having to to uh, put another pickup on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> You uh, you need that one guitar that you have that has all the switches on it. That is that a guild that has like three pickups. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's 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 getting a makeover. Yeah, and that's a that's a cool, sweet sounding guitar. Yeah. Uh, Jay Swirsky asks, "Is it normal for an arch top to have a degree of acoustic rattling sometimes?" You don't want rattling, you know. If you got rattling, it could be, well, it could be several things. Your pots, uh, maybe are rattling on the top. Make sure they're on tight. It could be your pickguard rattling. Most likely, it's the cord coming from your pickguard. If it's laying on the back of the guitar, going to here, it's it's your you know the electronic wire. Or the wire going to the tailpiece. That could rattle. Could be that. Other than that, it could be a brace. If it's a brace, then you kind of have to hold hold on to the thing and see where it's rattling. No, you don't want any rattling going on on your guitar. So it's either the wire, the pick guard, the pots. It, I, you know, sometimes if the, if the knob is loose, it, you know, it rattles. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Tweed Tone says jazz guitars especially for those iconic models will always be relevant I'm more of a I'm more fine clean player I adore the larger bodies and fancy inlays and quality build many of us out there it'll never die rock on yeah. and Jim wants to learn that country pick and tune oh yeah Yakety Axe Oh, yeah, getting sacked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Fun stuff. Uh, Fender. It's crazy, whacked out fun stuff. Fender A. Do, do you have a lesson on that or what? You know, they're not uploaded. I got a bunch of those bluegrass solos that came out of my book, and I, I, I haven't put them on the library yet, I don't think. Huh. Uh, Fender A six strings says uh, difference between Guild X700 and X500, and are they nice guitars for jazz? Yes, the nice guitars for jazz X seven hundred is a solid top. X five hundred is a laminate top. I think the seven hundred is a little more better looking. Shades of Benny Hill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, those Guild guitars are nice, man. They look cool and they sound good, and I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. I played that because it's kind of country. It's the only thing I know how to play that's kind of in a Chet style. And it's my arrangement, which is kind of weird. I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, what do you think, Wes? Are we um, going to wrap it up here soon, you think? What do you think? Should we do Angels I have heard, We Have Heard on High? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's a couple of other questions here. Um, my uh, Mark Jenich says... My X700 uh, does not have a sound post. I think the X500 has a sound post. I think you're right. And Are he, you sure about that? The 700 said, doesn't? Or maybe, maybe not. He I says know. he has an X170 that has a sound post. Mm -hmm. It really helps reduce uh, feedback. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. You know, I haven't had an issue with feedback in so long, uh, and it's, and actually, you know, like at the camp, you know, we play at a pretty high vo volume there, um, but yeah, I've never, I haven't had that issue since I got away from Fender amplifiers, 
Something about Fender amplifiers, the way they're voiced, I, I don't know. They're just, unless you turn them, you got to take, um, you know how when you plug in an amp, and if you're using a Strat or whatever, you generally got the knobs between, you know, five and ten, right? And you adjust the knobs. On a jazz box, you got to start with them on one and then go from there. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Tweed Tone has an interesting question here. Uh, what's the non snobbery basic response to a laminate maple when compared to a solid spruce tops on, uh, top on these larger body guitars? Okay. Well, I think one of the reasons why they started making a laminate top to begin with was because they're stronger. And what was happening is musicians, their tops were cracking, you know? They, if you don't take care of them, they get bumped, they fall down, they, you know, they'll crack. And so um, even, you know, uh, dryness will crack them. And so the tops can crack. A solid top ain't gonna crack. Okay, because you got like three or four pieces of wood, grain going, going every which way, and um, glue in between holding it all together. It doesn't mean that they're easier to make either, because when you, when, you know, they got a press, and then you take a tiny little piece of wood, you know, a little... What do they call it? Um, you know, like a veneer, a little piece of veneer. You put it on there, and then you you shape it with this press, and you put some glue, put another piece on there, shape it with the press, put another glue, put it, do it again. Da, da, da. you got to let it dry, too, by the way. So, um, you know, it's time-consuming. That's the way I understand it. Now, as far as sound... Howard Roberts always said, yeah, it's in the bracing. Um, I think a, uh, they just sound different. They just are different sounding. I think a, a solid top, you could make the ar argument that it's got more high-end bounce and stuff. A spruce, solid spruce. Now, the mape, you know, and you can hear the resonance in, in the body as you hold it. You can kind of hear the sound of the guitar. You hear all this one's flatter? <laughs> Funny. You know, you can kind of hear, they're all different, a little bit different. So, um, that, that's kind of the way I see it. It doesn't mean they're better but um, uh, the 175 was made so the top wouldn't break. Because they had the L4 before that, I think, which was a solid top. I don't think it matters on feedback either. You can get my, I had a 175, that thing fed back like crazy. Because I was using Fender amps too back then. So, okay. What now, Wes? Uh, um, let's see. D, uh, Oscar uh, Brogi says, uh, do you have an album I can buy? And I just posted a link there. If you go to that link that I posted in the chat just now, the first two items that you could buy are that his Christmas albums recommended. Yeah, thank um, you. Thank you. Uh, Mark does say the X uh, the X seven hundred does not have a sound post. Okay. No sound post. Um, solid wood for better sound. That's from Steppen, and. Uh, Mark says, I use an Evans amp with a 10-inch speaker with my guilds, and feedback can be an issue playing at big band volume. 
Oh, yeah. You know, and, you, and it's all relative to the sound around you. That's the other thing is when um, when you the, the volume around you is loud and it's, you know, you can't be next to the bass player because those notes are coming in here and they're hitting this thing. I, I experienced that like crazy being next to a, uh, a bass player when I set up with our in our group if if of course I'm the last to get there but the uh, if he's if there's no room for me to be on the opposite side of the drums away from him we got a problem because the bass makes this thing feedback and in a big band where do you put the guitar right next to the bass and the piano right so you're kind of over here in the rhythm section area Reality is, you're probably better off on the other side of the stage, except you don't have that inner play. So, um, so think about it. You make sure your amp isn't on this side. It's got to be on this side. Okay, that's number one. Don't have your amp here so it can feed back. So, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta. Sometimes you gotta use a three thirty five. You know, another nice guitar is a five, a Heritage 550 or a Tal Farlow. Those are 17 inch, but they're uh, solid, uh, they're a laminate top. So um, theoretically, it's not supposed to feed back as much. And there you have it. I actually haven't had hardly any, I don't think I've had any feedback issues with this. As long as I do what I just said with this L4. Um, let's see. Oh, he uh, improvising on Wave. We have a link for that, don't we? I've got a bunch of Yeah, stuff here, I'm there. adding it to the chat right now. Okay, good. Do you want me to play a tune and then we'll go? Um, or do you want to keep going, huh? Uh, it's up to you. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just along for the ride here. Okay. Uh, so, Mark, I just threw that in the chat there for you. That's our Wave Collection, Mastering Wave Collection. <laughs> Mastering the Wave. Yeah, so I think, I think that's everything you're going to want to know about Wave and more. Probably some things you did not want to know about the song would be included. Uh, uh, Jerry uh, Boyton says, Hi, Rich. It's negative two in Longmont, Colorado right now. Uh, really? Where is that? Is that by uh, Colorado Springs? I, I heard a report that uh, Denver was, was uh, going to hit its... Um, Coldest temperatures in thirty or forty years, or something. Uh, I'm gonna have to give Mitch a call. My uh, Mitch moved back there. My mo mother-in-law, your grandma, moved back there. Yeah, so it's it's well north of uh, Colorado Springs. It's uh, oh, it is Colorado Springs here, and then you got Denver, Longmont's kind of in between oh, Fort okay. But either way, I think it's cold everywhere you go in Colorado right now. Yeah, it's warming up the, over here. They're getting what we had last week. I right. Guess. But negative two, that's extreme. That's not comfortable. Um, let's see. Rich, uh, in your opinion, on the Eastman AR910CE, uh, I took a chance and bought it based on your opinion of Eastman guitars. Uh, AR910CE dash wow, BD. Well, what do you think of it? Expecting them to say right back. So, so what do you think? I hope you like it. Let me get out this 530. Should I get out this 530? 503, yes. 503, sure. yeah, thank you. Um, the uh, 910 is a big box with a floating pickup. And uh, it sounds really nice. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Yeah, it's it's. Is that one of their some their top of the line one or what? Yeah. And. Um, Cause yeah, where do you go after nine? God oh, dang it! Okay, go. Here you go. I got it. Thanks. 
sale tag. That guitar needs a little work on it too. I gotta... What's that? The Schaefer? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um... Yeah. Mark asks, thanks for the wave link. Is there an option to buy the lesson versus the subscription? Yeah, you should be able to just buy it. Yeah, buy when that. you buy it, it's it's called a rent, rental. And you rent it for six months. And all that means is you have six months to download it to your computer. I mean, it's yours. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you know, it's, it's the way it... This company, we had to run it, so. It's yeah, a, so rent it and then download it and then it's yours forever. That's right. Uh, Donnie Diego, Diago, uh, is the improv course still on discount? Um, no, it's not. But, you know, we're, I, what? 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 we should do it. We're going to, I want to do another sale on it. We do another sale. Right, right on. End of the year blowout, blowing them out. So keep your eyes open, Donnie. We'll have it. I think we're we're gonna. I'm gonna. I want to try to make a video, promotional video. So tune in next week. Did you shut this off? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sounding guy guitar easy to play too okay let's see if I can I, I want to do this angels we have heard on high god darn it Take it, Wes. Uh, Talk to the people. So, <laughs> round wound versus flat wound. Oh, now he just retracted that comment. Roland, we're uh, we're flat wound people, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we're um, for the jazz. That's part of the jazz sound. I used to hate him till I ate him. <sighs> And they're, 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 they're nice. Uh, get my set. Um, the Eagle or Eastman model, Mark asks, is the, let's see, 503. Right. 503, yeah. So he never returned as a horse, dislikes the headstock on the Eastman. Oh, why is that? That seems pretty standard. Seems like a not too far off of most guitars. Yeah. Why is that? By the way, what is uh what's your name? Uh it's hard calling you Hey, he, he never returned. <laughs> uh or I'm just gonna call you horse. Yeah. Um, who he he did say he loves uh, your version of La Mer. What is that? La M E R. I don't know. La Mer. I don't think it's mine you're referring to. I don't know the song. I've never. Which song is that? Brian Duffy. It's a five o three, not a six o three, but. I don't know the difference between the two anyway, so it probably looks just like it. No, the five, six or three is Oh, his name's Al. Awesome. Thanks, Al. I appreciate that, buddy. Oh, Brian just bought a 603. Sweet. I like I like names where there's only two letters. Al. For some reason, you'll still figure out how to uh, misspell it or pronounce it wrong, though. Ed. Ed's good. What, what Ed. Other? Ed. <laughs> what what a all right, let me play this Angels We Have Heard on High. It's kind of a trippy thing. Oh, he meant Beyond the Sea. Oh. 
RE, the, the 503 headstock, I like to see a little more clearance between the strings and tuning machines for other strings. You're right about that. There's not much clearance there, without a doubt. Hey, um, Wes, I think you're going to have to adjust okay, the play it. volume on that. <laughs> Start it. All right. All right. Now we're good. a trippy sound it's uh 
that, you know, when you have two dominant chords a whole step apart, what key is that? Well, you have to think about it as four and five of a melodic minor scale. Sweet. So, FYI. Um, by the way, we on the last we did this thing about the uh, uh, the diminished, and there's a uh, little riff here that's you know part of uh, Let It Snow. We, we, let's see, uh, where to go? No, oh. now right here. This this part of that diminished chord. You can also go across the neck, and when you go like this, and you get this, well, that's a cool sound, isn't it? And that that particular chord was in uh, Blue Christmas, though, th as well. Let's see. This is a, probably how to learn how to do this. That's a cool little 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 thing. Well, guys. Um, we're... hold on, uh, Oscar, just real quick. Oscar, I want your opinion on the Eastman AR910CE. You you said you it's a great guitar, right? Yeah, I mean it's beautiful. It's great. It's a, a wonderful finger style guitar. If you go out and play a, with a band with that, again, be careful where you set up, what amp you're using. Get away from the bass player because it will feed back. That that guitar is. With three and a half inches or better deep with a floating pickup and uh, so it's a big box and it can definitely feed back so but they play sweet and uh, they're, they're beautiful sounding guitar so I think you did good um, Daisy and Eddie Davis are friends All right. they gig together but sadly uh, Daisy is moving. Oh, no kidding. Is that the guy that I see you pit, uh, with uh, always uh, in a picture with him, Eddie? Oh, so where are you moving to? Where is he moving to? Uh, anyway, yeah, that's about it for uh, comments here. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next week. And I think about goals for next year. And um, thanks again for joining us. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas. And uh, thank you, Wes, for doing this. And Gail. Yep. And we'll see you after Christmas. Uh, and there you have it. Had to add that one in. That was for you, Wes. Uh -huh. Merry Christmas, 